and white structure, white has, um, you know, a nicer structure on the queen side, these two pawns protecting each other. So let's see, with the rooks off, white now plays b4, locking that pawn from playing a5. As is usually the case with, with high level, you know, games, the, the pawn structures are really restrained on both sides of the board, and this game is no different. Now, if queen takes e4, then the f7 pawn is a liability because of this battery of queen and bishop against that sensitive f7 pawn. So, black is still meekly defending now, queen a7, and now the move king g2. Another nice waiting move, getting rid of any potential uh, tactical liabilities. So, rook b7, black is helpless, just waiting now. Queen a4, and now Natalia, look at this reshuffling which occurs. The queen goes to c6 now. And here, black has just dropped this pawn. But how was black defending against that a6 pawn? If rook b6, for example, then this looks like a very dangerous infiltration with queen c8 check. It looks as though that's going to be all over. If king e7, you know, maybe a move like queen g8, and that's going to be difficult to defend f7. So the pawn had to go. Okay. So now, this is getting very difficult for black. A pawn down, technically. Still a very uncomfortable position. But maybe, you know, the team felt that opposite colored bishops would be some sort of saving um, resource at some point but in this particular position it just seems incredibly difficult so bishop g5 and now this move bishop b5 so gaining a tempo for a rerouting maneuver actually the bishop is coming to that very dominant d5 square soon to be supported by both these pawns so how is this achieved well there's the move b5 first so there's the constant threat now of b6 if black's not careful, as well as this move g5, if this bishop is, is not eyeing that square. So these threats are now becoming latent in the position. And black is really getting overloaded. The bishop is now getting away from that g5 square. So what square? So watch out for g5 later, ripping open the lines, as previously mentioned. So queen e6, a nice little rerouting move, exploiting that pin on f7, because the bishop is now free to go to that strategic d5 square so queen f5 keeping the pressure on f7 as well and now finally bishop d5 what a monster of a bishop eyeing all of these squares and protected by two pawns so although black's got the blockade on the b5 pawn the bishop was you know having a duty to stop g5 but now g5 is free to go and in fact Natalia chooses this position to play g5 so the punch which was systematically prepared is now thrown and this leaves black's king safety compromised decisively in fact because now queen g6 queen e7 and now simply rook g3 so black is helpless against the threat of mate and Atoni has announced mating four here and the team is kind of due to resign in fact the voting percentages are up to more than 75 percent so what an exceptional strategic display by Natalia let's have a look in overview and summary of this game so it's the classic Bolzowski hole on d5 being exploited and although white's pieces seemingly started to look a little bit passive there's a method in this madness of this passive knight this passive knight is going for this lovely strategic maneuver to d5 and this bishop although passive looking on e2 is also going to support the d5 domination strategy so we witness this strategic theme the Bolzowski hole very finely exploited in this game as well as black's potential for c file counterplay systematically squashed so black loses that light squared bishop and white closes up now the pressure on the c5 with this nice c3 move. So this is reaching an ideal position where black has virtually zero counterplay. 
and black still has this iron grip on that d5 square. So now we see this systematic rerouting of pieces around d5 and also an episode of winning a pawn now on the queen side as white infiltrates on these light squares, snagging the pawn. And now the bishop reroutes to d5. And finally, the final punch really of the game is this g5 breakthrough because the bishop had to have responsibility over here blockading these pawns. But now this g file is just decisive after rook g3. I hope you enjoyed it. Please leave any comments or questions on YouTube. Thanks very much. Little did the world team know that Natalia has an upcoming super grandmaster. Her son was helping her find very cunning resources, both strategically and tactically, as this picture reveals. So that's the big secret of how the world team was crushed.